My dear brothers and sisters, whatever you may be, I'd like to express my sincere and deep thanks for your sustaining vote yesterday. Though I feel ineloquent and slow of speech like Moses, I console myself in the Lord's words to him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. I take solace also in the love and support of my beloved wife. She has been an example of goodness, love, and total devotion to the Lord and for me and my family. I love her with every ounce of my heart, and I am grateful for the positive influence she has had on us. Brothers and sisters, I want to testify to you today that President Russell M. Nelson is the prophet of God on earth. I never seen anyone more kind and loving than he is. Though I felt so inadequate for this sacred call, his words and the tender look in his eyes as he extended this responsibility made me feel embraced by the Savior's love. Thank you, President, President Nelson. I sustain you and I love you. Isn't it a blessing to have prophets, seers, and revelators on earth in these days in which we live? who seek to know the will of the Lord and follow it? It is comforting to know that we are not alone in the world despite the challenges we face in life. Having prophets is a sign of God's love for His children. They make known the promises and the true nature of God and of Jesus Christ to their people. I've learned that through my own personal experiences. Eighteen years ago, my wife and I received a phone call from President James E. Faust then second counselor in the First Presidency. He called us to serve as mission president and companion in Portugal. He told us that we had only six weeks before we started the mission. Although we felt unprepared and inadequate, we accepted the call. Our most important concern at the time was to obtain the visas required to serve in that country because, according to past experience, we knew that process took six to eight months to complete. President Faust then asked if we had faith that the Lord would perform a miracle and that we would be able to solve the visa problem faster. Our one answer was a big yes, and we started making the arrangements immediately. We prepared the documents required for the visas, took our young family with our three kids, and went to the consulate as fast as we could. A very nice lady met with us there in reviewing our papers and getting acquainted with what we were going to do in Portugal. She turned to us and asked, Are you really going to help the people of my country? We firmly answered yes and explained that we would represent Jesus Christ and testify of Him and His divine mission in the world. We returned there four weeks later, received our visas, and landed in the mission field within the six weeks, as the prophet of the Lord has asked us to do. Brothers and sisters, I testify from the bottom of my heart that the prophets speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. They testify of Christ and His divine mission on earth. They represent the mind and heart of the Lord and are called to represent Him and teach us what we must do to return to live in the presence of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. We are blessed as we exercise our faith and follow their teachings. By following them, our lives are happier and less complicated, our difficulties and problems are easier to bear, and we create a spiritual armor around us that will protect us from the attack of the enemy in our day. On this Easter day, I solemnly testify that Jesus Christ is risen, He lives, and He directs this Church on earth through His prophets, seers, and revelators. I testify that He is the Savior and the Redeemer of the world, and that through Him we can be saved and exalted in the presence of our dear God. I love Him. I adore Him. 
I want to follow Him and do His will and become more like Him. I humbly say these things in the sacred name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.